I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. Big Dave, how you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great. Everything's going well? It's going good. So this week... Our topic is prosperity. In today's Meeting of the Minds, we are going to be discussing the lack program and letting go of lack. Now, before we get started, I do want to um, thank everybody for all the nice emails and comments we got on yesterday's episode on prospering our health and part one of epigenetics. And I want you guys to understand that that is probably one of the more important episodes when it comes to health for you guys to understand it and i know it was very science based and next week i'll get more into practical base of epigenetics but it's the epigenetic system that determines your health and every cell expression in the body and you want to understand that our wellness coaching is designed to reset body mind mind body to set up practices to reset the cell expression by resetting your habits, resetting old programs, getting you to set your day and close your day because that's very important for the nervous system and very importantly to have the right diet for your physiology, to do the right exercise according to how your body works. That's wellness coaching. So wellness coaching isn't just putting you on a diet and watching you and trying to get you to lose weight. It's quite the opposite. It's about resetting the tribalization process that was reset those first years of your life. And it's working on getting your state, your aim to be in that expressive state of the green zone. You yeah, getting you guys on the, the right diet is the easy part. The body's going to do what it has to do That's and easy. give it what it needs. But I agree. It's the, the coaching process of yes. it is the... the and the coaches are fantastic because they have all not not only have they have all been through the program and live the program, but they're also getting trained exclusively through our um, our training system that we are going through right now. So that is special till the end of end of this month, right? Until the end of the year, right? Yeah, January first, uh, this deal will end. But they do not have to use it till January, right? Yeah, no. You if you guys have things planned and you want to start in March or whatever time of the year. It's when you want to start. You're just taking advantage of the discount now. I just got so much feedback on that episode. And I want everybody to understand that the whole stress mastery shift coaching is geared toward epigenetics. That's what the whole thing's geared toward. It's it's, it's about changing the cell expression. We have one client that I'm working with right now, and it's about time to get her off blood pressure medication. Yeah. All right. So she contacted us. And, quick, too. Yeah. And it wasn't didn't take long. These things don't take long when you're working within the way the body is designed to work. Yeah. So this week, our topic is prosperity. And today we're going to be talking about a program that we hear a lot about in coaching, and that is the LAC program. So prosperity is an advance or gain in anything good or desirable. It is successful progress toward or an attainment of a desired object. Now, much like defining success, prosperity does not mean the same thing for any two persons. One may have a job where they get a couple dollar raise and that will seem to be wonderful to them because it prospers them and their family and their well-being, right? while another may not consider themselves prosperous until they have millions of dollars. So it can be a very subjective thing. So I ask you, what is prosperity in your viewpoint? I think it's the like continuation of like the expanding. You're constantly expanding. Wow. Got to start getting your own show, buddy. Uh <laughs> Prosperity is expansion. <laughs> exactly. Prosperity is tapping into the energy that we can expand and explore, which gives us the focus of growth. 
See, lack is the program that changes our energy and it changes our state to become restrictive. And when we become restrictive, it puts our focus in fear. And with our focus in fear, our perception goes into lack. So it's important to understand that no one, absolutely no one was born with lack. In fact, it is your birthright to explore, grow, and prosper. Now, many great teachers have taught this, that they've taught us that we are naturally able to prosper our lives if we just set our aim. And our aim has to be set to a state to explore and expand. So Jesus taught, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all things shall be added to you. He was not teaching that you had to become part of and belong to a certain religion or you had to go to a certain church to prosper. No, he taught that first you must connect to the truth. This connection is head, heart, and hand. And it's the connection to you that connects you to the all. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what blocks this connection? That's what we want to talk about. What blocks this connection is what we call the lack program. And it's a lack program that causes us to think lack. We're thinking lack. Now, this is also important. Prosperity is not wholly a matter of capital. I talked about that yesterday. One can have abundance of money and not have prosperity consciousness. So yesterday we spoke on prosperity and health. If your aim is set in a restrictive source, you can fight and force and make a lot of money, yet be caught in a negative aim and a focus of fear of losing the money. And this will create negative environment, it will create ill health, it will create ill relationships, and it will create an ill life. So it's not prosperity is not just money. It's prospering. Prosperity is ruled by the environment one keeps. If you have a lack program, it can manifest as a lack of health, a lack of connection. In fact, if one comes into a lot of money, let's say you won the lottery, but has a lack consciousness, a lack program blocking prosperity, they will soon part with their money. They will lose the money and do whatever it has to take to get rid of the money. See, prosperity is a state. It is what sets the aim. And it's this aim, true prosperity, when it's set, is lived through all five life categories. Career, finance, health, relationships, and personal and spiritual development. Now, the LAC program must be understood. The LAC program is set during the tribalization process. And believe me, lack can be an entire culture. All you have to do is go to India. In India, people are programmed into perpetual thought of poverty and they suffer want in all its forms. Now it's changing, mm -hmm. but that's always been it. They've been always kind of a spiritual land yeah. that was money poor. And we've always been a wealthy money land that is spiritually poor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how it's been. Now, the, the law of mind, we, talk, we haven't talked about it in a while. The law of mind is actually set to inspire prosperity. You think about it. Number one, what you think you create. Number two, what you feel you attract. And number three, what you imagine you become. So when we look at the life of Jesus... Agree or disagree, David, Jesus is kind of pictured as a poor man. Yeah. But he was a man of spirit. Therefore, he held his aim of expansion, which means he had thoughts of growth and the behavior supported his prosperity. He said, Father says, all that is mine is thine. Jesus did not burden himself with worry or lack. He took for granted that whatever he needed was his, much like a child. 
right? He manifested and handed out food for thousands. A poor man cannot do that. I've heard many religious leaders, by the way, scream on the evils of money and that it's kind of, they kind of picture it that it's holy to be poor and that poverty is a virtue. But this was not the doctrine of Jesus. I don't know if you realize that. So Jesus accepted the fact that all he needed was to be provided for. He had absolute faith on knowing that lack is evil. He is often described as being poor without a place to lay his head, yet he was welcomed into the homes of the rich and the poor alike. He didn't worry about it. He always knew he had a place to sleep. He always had a place to stay. Few understand how wealthy and prosperous Jesus actually was. Do you know his clothing, the garb he wore, was so rich and valuable that the Roman soldiers coveted for it because it would bring them riches. Now, that's not a poor man. No. <laughs> Correct? Jesus had a prosperity consciousness. He did not want. And I think that's an important statement. He had his aim set to expand. He had that prosperity consciousness. He did not want. He found abundance in the kingdom of God where everything needed becomes manifest. Not through hard labor, but through the realization of the truth that we are born to prosper. The lack program is rooted in the fear energy. The anxious thought about prosperity must be eliminated, eliminated and the perfect, the perfect nature of a child must be assumed. That was Christ, mm -hmm. you know? So when we reconnect to the heart, we begin the process of releasing the lack program. The law of mind states what you imagine you become. The imagination is the wonderful creative power that takes an idea out of the substance and manifests it into the world of form. We've talked about this. Everything we see in this room was once a thought. And so this process of creating form is done through the heart with faith and gratitude. That's where prosperity happens. So, where the question is this we're not born in lack so where does the lack program come from the lack program stems from the fear energy fear is the energy of the comfort zone it is the energy that protects the program fear is tied to the want of security fear is what creates restriction of aim fear is what creates resistance of aim. As children, we are not born with fear or lack. Children don't worry. They expand and explore. A child's thoughts are based and rooted in growth. But after the tribalization process, the child assumes the programs of the tribe. And lack is one of those programs I would say almost of most tribes. Maybe that's too much, but I think it is. Yeah, and I think especially if we talk about like how prosperity is a, a ambiguous term. Same thing with lack. I think even people who are born in riches of a family, they still have a lack program of some sort. A lot of the wealthy kids yeah. are lack. <laughs> I've been around a lot of them. They have lack. They don't even have self worth. Yeah, and that's right? what I'm saying. That the lack is in it. So you think about this. This is important. The child, as it gets toward the ages of five, ages five, six, and seven, are told over and over, what do you tell a child? They cannot have everything they want. Because what does a child want? Everything. Mm -hmm. The child doesn't see restriction. So they are told to be realistic. A big lesson affirmed to the child over and over and over again is don't be selfish. If a child is frustrated because they can't get what they want, they are scolded, right? Yeah. So as the child is being taught 
that they can't have what they want, they are also absorbing any lack messages coming from the environment. If the tribe, their environment complains about money, if there are fights about the bills, not having enough, if the environment is one of being a victim, the child will develop programs of lack. And remember, lack is defined as the state of being without or not having enough of something. Now, lack can be tied to career, a lack of opportunities. Lack can be tied to finance, a lack of money. Lack can be tied to health, a lack of energy. Lack can be tied to relationships, a lack of love. Lack can be tied to God, lack of being righteous. Sinners live in lack. Correct? Yeah, I think the, what's the term? Sinners never prosper? <laughs> never prosper. And if you're in certain religions, you're born a sinner. So how is that possible when we're all born to prosper? Because if you're born a sinner, you ain't learning to walk. You're not learning to talk. You're not learning to write. You're not learning to... You can't. It's impossible. So it's... it's you got to look at things. And sometimes we got to take religion and science and kind of look at it. It can't make sense. So think about this, Dave. Once the child goes through the tribalization process, the lack program is set. And the program then becomes a part of their identity. And the identity, which is the ego, creates the perception of lack. And now they see the world from a lack perception. No matter how hard they work, there's never enough. Now the lack program is interesting because what happens when you have this program as part of your identity it becomes interesting because it keeps us in a state of want. Lack actually keeps you in a state of want. But instead of driving us to go out and work to get what we want, we get trapped in fear. And this is really important to understand. And please tell me, David, if I, if I make this clear as I teach this. This is because when we want our aim our state is in the 125 desire energy. This is a low energy of restriction. It's a, it's a red zone energy. It's restrictive. And this means our focus is fear. And it's the behavior out of this program that makes the lack program so strong. In a restricted state, our focus is fear. So the lack program activates when we either want something or feel like we deserve something we don't have. So if we look at this from like a bird's eye view, let's look at it. We want something. Want means we don't have it. So it attaches to the lack program. When it activates, it holds, it holds us in a state. And you, do, you did not get something you wanted, so it holds you in a state of desire and want. Now, if you want, let's say, more money, what is the common sense approach, David? Work harder? Yes, go for it, yeah. right? Yes, work for it. Get a raise, create a promotion, create a side hustle. That's the common sense approach. But programs don't work common sense. Because programs are how the ego survives. The lack program sets the aim in restrict, restriction and resistance. And it sets the focus, your thoughts, what you're holding in mind, in fear. So we want more money. We make declarations. We will get more. But when it's time to work, fear is driving our behavior. So what do we do? We procrastinate, we worry, we doubt, we are too stressed and anxious. And instead of creating more income, we eat six Dunkin' Donuts and we swear tomorrow we're going to take action. Create blame. We create blame, exactly. We become a victim. Now here's where the lack program keeps us in lack. We want, that puts us in a desire state, right? We are focused then in fear so we don't act or we start something and quit. 
Then what happens? This is the anchor. We fall from fear to 30 guilt energy. Guilt energy anchors the lack program. Guilt energy. Guilt is the anchor of the ego. And when you get into guilt energy, it anchors the lack program in place and we feel powerless. We feel regret. We feel hopeless. We feel like we cannot win. So how do we let go of the lack program and release the lack program? Well, we can never let go of lack by wanting. And I think this is an important, important episode because it's confusing if you look at it commonsensical. Is that a word? I don't know. So before. Claire, let me know. <laughs> so how do we let go of lack and release the lack program? Well, I believe the first step of letting go of lack is to understand prosperity. We are each born as a child in prosperity. I always believe you got to look at the pendulum swing, right? So you got lack on one side, prosperity is on the other side. And you've got to understand prosperity. And so as children, we are born in prosperity. We want to walk, but we don't dwell in desire energy. We set our aim to expand and explore. This sets our focus in growth and courage, and we learn to walk. No matter how many times we fail, no matter how many times we fall, no matter how much it hurts, we will not stop until we walk. Why? We're not in a lack energy. We want to walk, but we're not held on the want. We're in the courage. You understand? We're in the growth. We're in the explore. So, you have anything to say? I think it's even though that, like you said, it's the, the attempt in knowing versus like believing or wanting. It's like you know it's there, so the baby keeps on trying and trying and trying because there's no end or there's or, no program, there's no doubt them. to it. Yeah, there's no program telling them, listen, you suck, you're terrible at this, you've fallen down 10 times, stay in bed, nobody's gonna make you do anything, right? It's always the voice. Now, it's important to understand prosperity is our natural state. To release lack and the lack program, what do we have to do? Reconnect to our natural state. And our state is our aim. This is the connection of head, heart, and hand. This connection is where the law of mind works for us. Because the law of mind is either working for you or against you, but it's working. So number one, what you think you create. We must learn to deny and affirm. The awareness of your thoughts is the reason we name the ego. Step three is stress mastery. Old thoughts of lack must be denied. And you simply state, I am not lack. And then affirm, I am a rich man. Something simple like that. I mean, obviously, you got to make your own thing. I am not lack. I do not. I am not want. And you got to do that. That's how you catch it. That's the first thing, what you think you create. you got to watch your thoughts. Number two, what you feel you attract. The program activated, the lack program activated, and taken through the let go technique changes the state in feeling, what you feel you attract. So you got to do the process. This is step four, stress mastery. Allow the feelings of lack. And then ask the question, could I let this go? And what you're asking is, could I be flexible in the way I'm seeing this? In the way I feel about this? Could I have some flexibility? Could I be neutral? And you got to say, when you say yes to this, you start to rise in the green zone. And when you rise in the green zone, people, you have just changed your aim to explore and to expand in your inner growth energies. That's what you have to understand. And the next question is, would I let this go? And the question is asking, Am I willing to let my history of lack, the program of lack, die? Am I let the story go? And am I willing to have a blank page here and start my own kind of story, my prosperity story? Would I let this go? And when you say yes, you rise higher. And then you ask, when will I let this go? And you say now. And what do you do? You surrender. And you affirm prosperity, and you let go of the lack history. This is how you change what you feel, what you feel you attract. You get rid of the programs that pull you down. 
That's the let go technique. Now, because remember, you weren't born with those programs. This is how you release them. And number three, what you imagine you become. I cannot stress it enough, the practice of visualization. But visualizing kind of what Wayne Dyer is teaching in our book study is about feeling and being in prosperity. Each morning, set your aim. Each night, close out in your aim. Your aim is your state, remember, right? So you want to make sure you set the day expansive, ready to explore. So now your focus is growth and your behavior follows. But you need to each night close out that day too because we make more creation while we sleep than we know because the subconscious is always working. So I think the first part that we have to do is we have to reconnect. Number one, we need to reconnect to our natural aim, which is to grow. I'm sorry, aim is to expand and explore that sets our focus and growth. So number two, you have to say, connect to your purpose and understand the pendulum. I think this is hugely important. Every one of us was born with a purpose and the purposes are what kept the tribe working as a unit. The mission of the tribe was to survive, but each purpose was connected to the heart. The purpose is in your heart. It's where you hold your purpose and your core values. You need to know your purpose, but just as important, you need to know the pendulum swing. So I know I'm a vitality purpose, and when I swing, I know I'm going to swing into desire and the want of control, and that's going to make me frustrated. And I just had a situation like that. And I had to stop and let it go. In fact, it woke me up in the night so I could let it go. Barry loves me. You know? Now, when David swings, it's a very different swing. When he swings, he swings into apathy. So his first thoughts in his head, when his state changes, you can't do this. You bounce out of that, like, automatically now. But it does it, not get on your ass anymore, right? Yeah, it's a very uh, conscious thing. It's like one of those things I experience that happening and it's for me to either stop it or i if i ride that train i'm a completely different person mm -hmm. and so that's just knowing that connect your purpose now you can do those in the community do the purpose exercise mm -hmm. it's in module number three and it's where we do it. and that brings us to what else is in module three is number three of letting go to lack program you got to understand higher goal setting so we just talked about how lack is connected to want yet we're taught to set our goals in what we want and it's right and it's wrong. You have to learn higher goal setting of how to get clarity of what you want, but then to take that want and plant it into the heart of the imagination so you can use the law of mind, which you imagine you become. And the want now becomes the now. Does that make sense? That's higher goal setting. So you've got to learn that. And again, that's in module three in the community. If you're having, and this is December, you guys should be deep into higher goal setting. This is what you want to understand is because that whole lesson in the community takes you right through the process. Yeah. But you've got to understand, that's how you get rid of lack. You've got to reset your aim. You cannot set your goals wanting something because then you are setting your aim in force. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I, I set materialistic goals and things like that. Fine. There's, yeah, you know, there's but then you gotta the, then you gotta be the ex person exactly. with the material. I don't That's it. I don't live my my goals to. I need to achieve this. I need to do this. I put it out there and I let it go. And the same thing with my visualization. Like I go through and I can tell you exactly what either that materialistic thing is or how it feels or what I feel having that. And it's never ah, boastful. I have this. I have that. It's the accomplishment of being able to complete my goals. Now, I can tell anybody listening to this, the podcast has been going for a few years now, right? When we started this, I set my vision, right? Remember? Mm -hmm. What's happening next year? It's happening. Exactly <laughs> how I said it. It's happening already. Mm -hmm. And it's just coming into place. And I'm not forcing it. I was going to say, it's never one to be forced. Nope, either. not forcing it. So in higher goal setting, by the way, as the lesson ends, it actually takes you into the into the eight techniques so you learn how to visualize too. Because you've got to know how to visualize. Yeah. 
So number four is you got to set the day. Every single day you got to set the day. You got to set your aim into expand and explore. That's the green focus power hour because that's going to set your focus and growth. If your focus is set in growth, your behavior follows. You understand? And But here's number five. If you want to get rid of lack, you also got to close the day. One of the things I have is, and I believe in the focus mirror. And in my focus mirror, it's pretty, pretty crowded right now, right? The focus mirror is you kind of right on the mirror. Exactly. You're right on the top of it. You're right honest. And you're honest with yourself that day. What? And this is kind of where I ask for forgiveness because a sin is when you miss the mark. Well, I'm sinning all day long. Every time I get negative, I sin. And so I always ask for forgiveness on, on that. But I also have in there very specific uh, affirmations that I have. I got very specific statements in there. But the most important thing is I close my day. So my aim is still set in growth when I go to bed. I'm not taking problems from work into my night routine. And then number six. So we look at these. Number one, we're looking at what it takes to set, right? Number one, connect to your natural aim, your state, reconnect. And we talk about head, heart, and hand. Number two, connect to purpose. Understand the pendulum. Very important because that's when your aim changes. You go into red zone. Number three, the process of higher goal setting. Number four, set the day. Green Focus Power Hour is how you set the day. And that's step five of stress mastery. Number five, close the day. The focus mirror, journaling, um, our focus management system, we do all that to close the day. Literally takes two minutes. Yeah. And then number six to end this episode is personal growth personal development. Every single day you must work on yourself. The level of one's personal development at any given time in their life will determine the level of their success. And the reason is you can't change your aim if you're caught in the programs of your history. David. The one thing, and I've shared this in the community, is uh, for me, overcoming lack started with um, increasing gratitude. Um, the pendulum. You, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. and for me, sure. I, I end the day with asking myself how much stress did I experience today, right? I saw that. And that was, by the way, that was a good post. Experienced it, and the reason why I did this is because one, it brings awareness to the day and what I feel should have been different, or what Nelson, my ego, feels should have been different. And then if I say I didn't experience it, Nelson did. I can't have a bad day. And I can be grateful for the day no matter what. And if you can do that and separate yourself from the story of a stressful day, of a day that you made it to the end and you're grateful for, I mean, it's impossible to have lack or even stress for your day if you're not the one experiencing lack or stress. That's it. I thought that was a very good post, by the way. By the way, those in the community, I got your messages. And they told us what they want to learn. Nope. Next module is on prosperity. We will talk about money. You want to talk about money? We're going to talk about money. <laughs> you know, because I think it's important. Then the next one, I think we're going to do a second health module. We'll get deeper into the health aspects of things because we've had some requests for that. So we can do that. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are below the show. If you're interested in coming into the community, we have 30 days absolutely no obligation come on in and explore it and if you just want to come in and get the programs come in and get the programs and leave it's okay we understand as always until next time stay inspired